So this is an I Your Life light bar. Uh, in my previous testing, previous videos, which you should be able to access through the uh, the channel, you'll see some details about uh, where I put on these floodlights up on my roof rack. Now, one of the reasons they're mounted down into the side is because I needed this thing set up to be able to cover a, uh, carry a rubber boat without puncturing or harming the rubber boat. Uh, under those circumstances, I would take the jack and the tools off the roof rack. But those are eventually going to be on a side rack anyway. Uh, something patterned after the Pioneer tool racks on military vehicles. So those lights had to be down and to the side. The other thing is, of course, they swivel to the side to maximize the floodlight usage, but they're not really good as an on-road driving light. One of the things I've noticed is that the floodlight is so broad, so sudden coming out of the light, it comes off, it lights up the front of the vehicle. There's, there's actually, even though they're behind the windshield, because of the way the light splashes, it actually splashes across the windshield. So driving at night looking out of this thing is almost like trying to drive with your dome lights on or, or looking out over the distance from a porch while the porch light is on and the porch light is also kind of reflecting off your window. So they're not only good as driving lights, they are good as floodlights. And for short distance stuff, that's still kind of okay. As far as work lights go, they're terrific because I can use this hood as a work area. I, I don't really care about the paint. I'll just break out more spray paint if I need to touch it up. And they'll light up the hood as a work area. That's pretty good. Uh, the other thing is, it's a lot better with the diffuser because it is kind of harsh lighting at night. But we can work with that. You can, you can do things to throw something up there as a diffuser. So I got this I Your Life light bar as an actual driving light, and part of the reason why was the lack of performance from, let's say, factory headlights, and these these other lights are, are really a floodlight, a work light. They're, they're okay for search operations and lighting up a work area, but, but driving, it didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. When I saw the advertising for these, they said, well, it's both a spotlight and a floodlight. And I didn't really see a lot of explanation as to why, but I'm going to explain that in this video. The, the key to that is in the reflectors off the LEDs. The LEDs across this whole thing are actually all the same, but the reflectors are different. You'll notice how this batch of reflectors are smooth on the inside. They turn that light into... A more focused and regular cone and the shape by which they were molded and installed means that it goes more or less straight and with a large number of these it fills in the light as far as going a long distance we'll test that at night the nighttime videos are kind of so-so but I have a handheld spotlight and I'm probably going to install one of the Chinese versions of the remote control go light but I, I still have that issue where the roof rack has to stay flat across the top for mounting the boat. And so we may or may not do that. It, it depends on how it goes. I, the other thing, of course, is one of the uh, uh, police-style roof lights that would go, or one of the police-style searchlights that would, that would bolt into the A-pillar on the vehicle. I'm not a big fan of those either just because the A-pillar on this particular vehicle is kind of thin. So... You know, we're not quite there on that. But here you'll see the diffusers are ribbed. And what that does is that throws more of the light to the side. It, 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 it creates a bouncy back and forth and actually throws that light out to the sides on this. While the center sets make it go forward. Now, when you buy these things in different lengths, it's more lights. Okay, it basically it doesn't really change the ratio of everything, but it gives you more lights. The other thing is, the company that makes these is the same one that makes a lot of the commonly available police lighting on vehicles uh, where they can get these in different colors. Now, interestingly enough, on the police versions, which are going to be more expensive and, of course, multicolored, there's also different switching options on what colors and what sections of the light you're going to turn on. On these standard models, on basically the ones that hover around 100 bucks. You, you've basically just got positive and negative wiring to come pre quimped uh, So it's either on or it's off. The entire light bar is either on or it's off. So if you want separate switching between spotlight and floodlight, you would have to go with lights that are different from this and that are more specialized on whether or not it goes between spot and flood. 
this is basically a general purpose bar shaped driving light which I, I don't have the expectation of it being a super long range light but I do expect it to perform better than the factory headlights at short to moderate distances to give me more detail on the road in front of me which is more important in survival and disaster situations where there may be obstacles in the road there may be other things in the road you're looking for details on uh, for example if there had been previously an ambush on a particular road you might find brass casings and stuff somebody may have gotten the vehicles off the road they're not cleaning up all the details you, you want to be able to see those details in front of you um, if there had been any booby trap or any of that kind of work you, you need to be able to see those details more directly in front of the vehicle if all you're trying to do is read road signs it doesn't really matter that much and the floodlights on top because of the wavelengths of of so-called white light it's actually uh, very filled with UV on the LEDs it just by their nature they're very UV uh, you're going to be able to see road signs reflective road signs at a much greater distance with these things than you will with regular full spectrum headlights so the mounting on these things is a little different from brand to brand even though a lot of them are coming from the same factory this particular one came with the bottom mounts and the brackets are very similar to what was on the headlights I, I'm, I'm sorry on the other other lighting in fact the bolt kits are almost identical it's a two-piece type of a bracket and these slide in the rail from side to side so if you had a bracket that was you know different mounting point you could work with that the thing is that as far as your angles go it's all pretty much going to be on the bottom of this okay it's pretty much all on the bottom it can it can lock in place and uh, what I'm going to do is with this custom bumper set up is I'm I'm, I'm cutting some metal out I'm, I'm gonna make my own stuff for this now what's fashionable right now is a lot of CNC laser cut you know stealth fighter looking shapes on front bumpers main reason I'm not doing that is I, I don't have a CNC laser uh, uh, plasma cutter you know, uh, and I don't have uh, in fact my plasma I do own a plasma cutter it's just a piece of crap it's not working uh, what I do have is a portable bandsaw, and it's it's fine for doing everything. It's an angle metal, flat stock, and when you start welding angles, uh, especially diagonals on that flat stock, it becomes super strong. And I, I don't think I'm going to have a problem with this. It, it, I may end up putting a um, some diagonals in for reinforcement. And of course, in mounting these, we, we don't want to block off airflow on the radiator. Again, it depends a lot on the climate you operate in. But we're looking at sweet spots in between stuff here where normally there wouldn't be any airflow. Are these lights going to help uh, or hurt your aerodynamic stuff on a vehicle? That's a point of argument. Expect it to hurt your aerodynamic stuff. But on a lot of 4x4s, it just doesn't matter. If you are uh, you know, really looking for maximum fuel economy and minimizing wind drag on a freeway, got to look at a sports car. And maybe I'll start doing sports car videos, but this is my 4x4 project. I really don't care that much about wind drag. Um, freeway fuel economy I care about a little bit, but not as much. But expect you know, the installation of lights on these vehicles to harm your aerodynamic efficiency. So we're going to show the installation and performance on this next. All right, running into a couple of things on the installation here. Um, the way the bottom brackets slide back and forth, the, one thing to understand is they don't slide all the way to the edge. So I, I fabricated this little square box type grill guard type thing because the bumper is going to eventually be much more involved on here. It's, it's going to have lights. It's going to have the winch. It's going to have a couple other things. Of course, we've got the, the, the pintles. We've got the push bars. We've got a lot of stuff going on with it. this front bumper. It's going to be like the Swiss Army knife of front bumpers. It, part of which is a light, but there's also going to be other stuff going on. So, as I went to drill the holes for this, I run into a couple of things. One, it's hard for me to tell if the bolts that came with this were metric or not. Um, I'm not quite sure where I put them either. But the bolts that put these little brackets in were, um, they came with nuts and a lock washer. What I highly recommend on that is 
using the little nylon core uh, lock washers. I don't know why this thing's going out of focus. And then I, I just happen to have these bolts from a store display installation. We ended up not using all the hardware we were giving, and, and so it was left over from another project. But but use the nylon lock washer stuff. For something that's going to go off-road a lot, it's going to bounce, it's going to jiggle, you're, you're going to have those issues. Another thing is that you can weld stainless to regular steel as long as you're using stainless steel rod or weld wire. Usually that's going to be weld wire. You, you can weld stainless to regular steel. It, it, it's not against the law. It's not against the laws of physics. You could do that. And that's one of the ways to make that stuff more secure and lighter weight. I may end up doing that. Now what you cannot do is weld aluminum to stainless steel. And so there has to be a bolt or a nut interface between the lower brackets and the upper brackets no matter what you do. The other thing is, don't make the mistake I made, this is where you get to be educated by the video, is when you go to drill the holes for this, you want to drill them inboard by preferably a couple inches. Now you're going to get a couple of very skinny, tiny little Allen head things. I have to actually pick these up with a fingernail. You'll see these little things. These are for locking those little sliders underneath this. Um, there's a bunch of little lock screws and stuff going on with that, but up underneath that is some stuff that would lock it from sliding side to side. So all the bolts and getting the angles in right and all that kind of stuff, that, that can become a little bit complex on here. And what I ended up with was a little bit of a, a dare we say crooked or do we say asymmetrical. Um, it ended up being a little bit more spaced here than it was on the other side when I redrilled the hole. I'm, I'm probably going to redrill, just just take that bolt out, redrill that in, put that in board another notch, and give myself a little right left adjustment on this thing because there's there's not a whole lot of adjustment for your beam, and realistically adjusting the beam left right. If you go this way, you're really not changing the world much on that, but you need to be able to go this way, and there's, there's no way to do that. So when you mount these, I would suggest not drilling the original sheet metal on your vehicle. You know, drill drill and cut the stuff that you fabbed. If you need to re-drill, re recut it, then that's the way you go. If you're paying a shop by the hour, you know, you got to figure out whether or not you're paying them by the hour or by the end result. Uh, because this thing's all a home fab type stuff, and it's mainly for budget and function, it's not for, for I mean, it's for looks for its own style, but that's, you know, kind of what I'm working with here. And, um, and it is meant to be kind of a Mad Max vehicle, so I'm not going for perfectly symmetrical lines on everything, but I'm going to make some adjustments to make sure this goes better. So we have sunset coming on, and you can see this looks like it's almost a sunlight reflection going on. Uh, it's pretty bright, and we'll, you know, next segment we're going to show this at night. And, uh, you know, good basic white light, uh, or white out near white LED. Again, there's a lot of UV involved with these, so if there's anything that's going to be reflective, black, white, reflective, anything like that, then uh, it, it's going to carry much further than you might normally see because it's basically going to react a lot with anything that's UV sensitive. All right, so here we see regular car headlights. Uh, again, the iPad is not as sensitive to light as the naked eye in this circumstance. Uh, here we have the light bar on, and that's going to give us all the details of the graffiti of the wall. Uh, to the naked eye, I'm getting more detail on that railroad bridge in the background. When I do the side auxiliary lighting, here's here's where I get the fill. Okay, this is where I get the fill off to the side of the vehicle. It is uncomfortably bright when viewed from the front. It's uh, basically going to light up an area, and then if we're trying to light up an area where we're going to get a lot of stuff done. We want to go for uh, indirect lighting, let's say throw the light at a wall, let it reflect back into the area that we're going to eliminate if, if we want like relatively comfortable work environment. Otherwise it's just it's too harsh to look at and um, that's, that can be an issue. When we light up everything around a vehicle, if we have multiple vehicles with lights, you just got to watch the angles that you're going to be pointing them at. 
but we're definitely good at lighting the ground area around and the immediate area. When it comes to carrying out at a distance, you've got to realize that it's mainly going to be activating reflectors and stuff at a distance. And you only get so much of a floodlight uh, effect out of incandescent lights, but you get a lot of floodlight out of LEDs. And uh, reverse is like halogens and stuff like that. You can, you can floodlight with special reflectors, but they, they kind of are going to end up pointing in a direction. The LEDs, you can spotlight with an LED, but only so much. But that's what gives us the double intensity in the center of the beam area directly in front of the vehicle. 